Hey everybody, I have an amazing video for you today. It's one I know a lot of you out there have been looking for. It's a way to auto switch your ATEM cameras based on who's talking. I'll state right up front, this is based on an existing video from a channel called Tech Exeter. It'll be linked below so you can check it out. There were a couple things missing from that video that I think are pretty important. Number one is how to move around in a command window. If you're not somebody who's super computery or you're not from the DOS era like I am, you probably have no idea how to change directories. So that's why I'm here is to help simplify this process for you. The other thing is there's a couple of weird limitations that could be problematic. I'm not gonna talk about those now, those are at the end of the video. So watch all the way through and then you can decide if this is gonna do what you want it to do or not. The program you're gonna to need to run is on GitHub, so I'm posting a link to that below as well. But GitHub is also a weird page that I know a lot of people have trouble moving around. So I'm gonna post my own link for you to get the software that will obviously be below. And before any of you start posting in the comments, hey, can you add this feature or do this in the future? I didn't write the code, so I can't change the software. I'm happy to answer any questions I can in the comments for you, but my suggestion is if you have requests or questions, you go to the GitHub that I've linked below and leave messages there for the person who wrote the script, and then maybe you'll get the answer you need. With all of that out of the way, I'm gonna show you how to auto-switch your ATEM sources right now. Let's go! Okay, I'm assuming you downloaded the zip file, but if you didn't, please go do that and come back. Now, the next thing I need you to do is open up a file explorer. You're gonna to navigate to your C drive and then create a folder called ATEM. Now, unzip your download anywhere you want. We're gonna transfer the files after you unzip it to that folder you just made, so your location for the unzip doesn't matter. Okay, highlight all the files in your unzip, right click and choose copy. We're going to copy them instead of just dragging them over so that we always have an original to go back to if we need to. Now in your new ATEM folder, right click and paste the files. Great. Now hit your Windows key on your keyboard or open the start menu and type CMD. This is short for command. Now with the command window open, you should see something like you see on mine. C backslash users backslash and your name or the name of your computer. If you want to go up one directory in a command prompt, you type cd for change directory, followed by dot dot. So you're going to type cd dot dot and hit enter. Now you're going to do that as many times as you need to until you get back to your base C directory, which would be C colon backslash. Once you're there, we want to move into the new ATEM folder. So you're just going to type cd space ATEM and hit enter. And you should be in that new folder. Okay. Now, in this folder, there's a few useful commands. The first one is a command to open a window that shows you all the parameters of your ATEM. The second one is to monitor what's actually happening on your ATEM. And the third one is to initiate the auto switching. Before we get going, we need to know the IP address of our switcher. So make sure your ATEM is turned on and connected to your network. Now, open your ATEM setup software, not the control software, the setup software. Click on the little file icon and now you should be able to see your IP address in the network section. Make note of this if you need to so you don't have to keep coming back. Jump back to the command window. The first thing we want to do is run the command that shows us our ATEM information. That code is as follows. ATEM audio monitor switcher.exe space and the IP address of your switcher. What you're seeing here is the IP address of mine. Make sure you put yours in. I will post all of these codes, by the way, so you can just copy and paste and change the IP address to whatever yours is. Once you type in this command line and hit enter, you should see all of your ATEM information. The really important info that we need from this is a note of the input ID and the source ID for each channel. So for HDMI input one, that info is one for the input ID and 65280 for the source ID and so on down the line of inputs, including our microphone inputs. These are the IDs that we're gonna to use to execute our auto switching. If you decide that you want or need to split any of your audio inputs from a stereo channel down to dual mono so that you can have two things being controlled independently through one input, that split will be referenced in this window. 
Here you can see that I have my second microphone input split. So the input ID is 1302, but the left side is source ID 256 and the right side is source ID 255. You'll see something similar for any input you split. And you should be aware, this window doesn't update in real time. So if you've already launched this and then make a change to your channels, you won't see it updated. You'll have to rerun the code to see your updates. Luckily, this isn't difficult to do. You basically just hold the right arrow key on your keyboard and it will populate the last command you typed in. And then you can just hit enter and you'll get updated info. So really quickly, if you wanna split your audio channels, here's where you do it. Open the ATEM control software, not the setup software, the control software this time. Click on the cog in the lower left corner, choose the audio tab at the top of the new window, and under split audio tab, choose any channel input that you want to split into two separate channels. And just so we can see the result, I'm actually going to split HDMI input 4 on mine. Once this is done, run your command again and you'll see the new information. So as you can see, my input 4 is now showing 256 and 255 respectively for the left and right channel instead of 65280. And again, this will be the same format for any channel you split. Now the next command we want to run is the monitor command. This lets us see what's actually happening with input. So it shows us activity. Before I run this command, I'm going to make sure I have a couple of mics turned on so we can see some activity. I have one source running into mic input one and I have two sources running into the split on microphone input two. So we'll see all three of those as separate inputs. Instead of launching this command in the same window, I'm gonna open a second one. That way I can keep my reference information handy in the first command window. Okay, now let's launch our second command. I'll copy and paste it into the window. And boom, we can see microphone activity on both sides of our split channel and in our first main channel. This is great, so we know things are working so far. Now we want to build our actual auto switching command line. So what I'm going to set this up as is microphone input one is going to switch us to one camera view. Microphone input two on the left side is going to switch us to another camera and then microphone input two but on the right side is going to switch us to a laptop feed. So my auto switching code would look something like this. And that's my complete code. So now we can see if it runs correctly. We'll open a third command window and navigate to the correct place. Now let's paste our code and hit enter. If we speak into the first microphone, we can see a change. If we speak into the second microphone, we can see another change. And if we play audio from the laptop, we can see a third change. Amazing, it's working. You're probably wondering what these numbers are in the little green and red boxes in the command window, and that's actually a buffer. So as each microphone starts to increase and overtake the other microphones, it fills up that buffer with its number. And the ATEM won't actually switch until all the reds have become the same number and turn to green, and then your switch takes place. So that's how the system works. That's how it decides who's got priority. So I know some of you were probably hoping that there'd be a Mac solution here. Unfortunately, today it's only a PC solution. But I'd like to point out that the overhead in processing is so low to make this run that you can actually do it on the most basic of computers. It's so basic, in fact, that this is what I'm running it on. This is an Intel compute stick. Yes, it is a computer. And yes, this is Windows 10. And yes, this is running the auto switching. Well, this isn't because this is in my hand, but I have another one. So you know what I mean. It's pretty low. It's pretty low. It's pretty cheap. Okay, so this is the point of the video where I tell you this isn't a perfect system. The first thing I want to note is that your ATEM has to be in cut bus mode. It cannot be in program preview. The reason for that is because program preview is basically saying somebody has to confirm going to screen with something before it happens. And that defeats the purpose of an auto switch. If you don't know how to change this mode, you can watch my video linked below. It's a really, really quick one on how to change your ATEM switching modes. Okay, the second thing I want to make note of is that if you make a physical change on your ATEM, it will temporarily interrupt your auto switching. So let's say you've got an auto switch happening on one while someone's talking, but you want to show a graphic while they're speaking, so you switch to four. That will temporarily stop the auto switch. That's actually a good thing um, if you want to do something like show a graphic because it won't switch back to this person and take away from the graphic while they continue to speak. 
However, if somebody starts to speak on channel two, it will initiate an auto switch. And at that point, your auto switching is back in control. This is a minor deficiency and, and maybe you view it as a benefit. I actually do. So as long as you know that it's there, you can work around it. Okay, and the final point is about your event. If you have the kind of event where people argue or maybe try to speak over top of one another, you could end up with a lot of camera switches in a really short amount of time. This isn't a huge limitation if you're aware of it. You just need to take steps to really tighten up your production. And actually, if that sort of thing did happen in your event, you could just close the auto switching window until you're back in control of your event and then restart the window again. That simple. So if you're okay with these few limitations, I think this is a pretty cool piece of software with a lot of potential. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope it was useful. And if it was, please like and share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when our next video comes out. And until the next one, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies.